Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. We're getting into the cooler months of the year, and therefore it is time to bake. I decided for this video I wanted to do bread again, but I wanted to do a fancy bread. I've got a video recipe on the website for basic white bread, also one for French bread, also for brioche tête. I wanted to do a braided loaf today because, well, they look beautiful. They're inexpensive to make. I think it makes a great gift. If you're invited to dinner and you want to bring something, make a loaf of bread. You can make it for less than a buck. I mean, if you really like them, buy something nice, but, you know. Anyways, um, one of the things I like about doing a braided loaf is I can do other things like working with egg yolks. And I'm going to show you some tricks for getting a beautiful, beautiful loaf of bread. But first, I want to get into the ingredients I'm going to be using today for making my braided loaf of bread. I have here three quarters of a cup, 177 to 180 milliliters of water, one and a half cups, which is 12 ounces or 350 milliliters of lager beer. If you don't want to use beer, you can just use an additional cup and a half of water. I like to use beer in my bread because I think it gives it a, I don't know, breadier flavor. I have six eggs here. I'm going to be using six egg yolks in my bread. I'll save the egg whites for making cat's tongues. That's a French cookie. I give those to the kids in the neighborhood and get them all hopped up on sugar. Their parents love me for that. This is my flour. I have, I weigh my flour rather than measure it. I buy flour in the 25 pound bag at the warehouse store and then I portion it into two pound portions and store them in Ziploc bags. So if you measure your flour with a measuring cup, this would be seven cups of sifted flour or six cups of scooped flour. There's a difference between just plunging your measuring cup in a container and scooping out flour and then sifting flour into a measuring cup before until it overflows. I prefer to weigh my flour when I'm baking because it's more accurate. So this is two pounds or 900 grams of flour. This is all purpose flour. The last time I went to the warehouse store, they didn't have bread flour. So I'm adding to this two tablespoons of vital wheat gluten. This is optional if you have bread flour. This will increase the protein in my bread, which will make it more able to form the glutens, which give the the bread it's it's elasticity I'll get a nicer rise out of it again two tablespoons of white vital wheat gluten optional one tablespoon of yeast you can use active dry or instant yeast one tablespoon of sugar and then two teaspoons of salt finally I made an egg yolk wash this is two egg yolks one quarter teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of water if you can Make your egg yolk wash the evening before. That'll give the salt an opportunity to break down the egg yolks. And it'll be easier when you're using a pastry brush to brush this onto the surface of your bread dough. This will give me a really nice browned surface of my bread. I'll show you that. I think it makes a really, really pretty bread, especially when you're going to be making a braided loaf. So those are the ingredients for my loaf of bread today. I have half of my flour in here, roughly half, really roughly half. There's my vital wheat gluten, my yeast, my sugar. I'm going to save the salt until later. If you don't know which is which, sugar has a sparkle to it. When you look at it in the light, it'll sparkle. Salt is a dull white. So they're easy to tell apart without dipping your finger into it and tasting them. And then I've heated my water to about 115 degrees. This is the water and the beer. It's good to get the yeast warm, gets it all hot and bothered, makes it want to reproduce. You know what that's like. It'll activate this yeast. Okay. Get this all mixed up decent. You don't have to be too fussy at this point. And then let this sit for about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. That'll get that yeast all activated. And then we'll be ready to start putting this all together, 
although I'm starting off in a glass bowl, it is too warm today. I mean, it's the cool time of year, but it's 85 degrees outside. So it's too warm to work too hard. So I'm going to actually be moving this to my stand mixer to do the mixing, the finish, the mixing and doing the kneading. Okay, I'm going to be um, setting this on number two speed and working in my flour. You can do this by hand if you want. And this is going to make a lot of noise. I'm working my flour in a little at a time so I don't get flour all over my counter. This takes a few minutes to get this all worked in. I put the last of my flour in there and it's not all completely worked in yet. This I know because I'm about a quarter of a cup short on liquid is going to start getting kind of dry. This is also a good time to put the salt in. Yeast isn't crazy about salt, so I always put the salt in later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working in my egg yolks, one or two at a time, as this is mixing, and then that'll give me the moist dough that I'm looking for. At this point, I put the last of my six yolks in there. And watching this, if you, if you have a stand mixer and this is the first time you've made bread in a stand mixer before, at this point, it'll look like it's broke, the dough is broken up. It's because of the egg yolks. But if you keep working it, it'll all come back together, together again into a nice dough. One thing that I dislike about a lot of recipes tell you when making bread in a stand mixer they say to put in enough flour until the dough starts to separate from the side of the bowl I could not agree less for an, that'll make a very I think it too dense a bread if you want a light fluffy bread I like to see the dough sticking quite a bit to the side of the bowl I don't want it to be wet in the bottom of the bowl but I do like a sticky dough, slightly on the sticky side, because that'll give me a moister, lighter bread. And I really like the texture of that bread. So let me finish mixing this up. And then I'm going to let this knead for 10 minutes in the machine while I'm doing dishes. Okay, my dough has been kneading now for 10 minutes in the machine. I buttered a large glass bowl to put the dough in. Let me see if I can show you this as far as what I'm talking about, as far as stickiness. Scrape this down. See, it's a bit sticky. That's what I want. Move this out of the way. And hopefully you can see how that is sticking. I can hold this right. That is sticking to the bottom of the bowl. It's not separate. But it's not a liquid in the bottom of the bowl either. It's a nice moist dough, a little on the sticky side. That's what I want. So I'm going to move this to my glass bowl so that it has and then move set it aside so that it has an opportunity to rise. And there goes a plane overhead. I live near the airport. I don't live in a fancy house in the Hamptons like those famous TV cooks do. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park. Okay. Get the last of this dough out of this bowl. And by the way, when it comes to washing a bowl like this, it's full of dough. If you use a sponge or your washcloth, it's going to have those doughy pills in it, and it's going to make a mess of your sponge or your washcloth. Use paper towel. Then you can just throw the paper towel away and keep those little dough pills from getting into your sponge or your washcloth. All right. Pat this down.
And then this is my bag that I used for buttering the bowl. I'm going to pat the top of this with butter. That'll do two things. It'll help lock the moisture in. And when this rises, it won't get all stuck to the plastic, which will be on the top of this top of this um, bowl. So I'm going to cover this with plastic and put this in a warm place, which is pretty much anywhere in this house today because it's 85 degrees outside, so it's probably closer to 90 in here. I usually put it on top of the refrigerator. So there's my dough. This has to rise for about an hour. My dough now has been rising actually for just over 50 minutes. This kitchen is so warm that this dough rose pretty rapidly. Look at that. Bowl is full of dough. So this next part is a bit tricky. I want to weigh this dough and hopefully I don't exceed. This is called punching it down. Hopefully I don't exceed the limit of my scale. Three point three pounds, six point three ounces. Okay. Three pounds. I'm writing this down. Six point three ounces. So three times sixteen. Three times sixteen equals that's forty eight ounces plus 6.3 equals, that's a total of 54 ounces. Divided by five should be right around 10 to 11 ounces. Okay, 10 to 11 ounces. I'm saying by five because I wanna do this in five strands. That's gonna be the tricky part. Okay. Knife. Zero that. That's 11.5 ounces, a little bit too much. 11 ounces even. One. Eleven point four ounces, ten point seven ounces, that's light, ten point six ounces. Ten point three ounces, and what is this way? Eleven point three, ten point three, eleven, eleven point one, and ten point five. I'm not going to get them exact, but that's close enough. Okay. Now, make sure these are well punched down. It's okay to completely deflate these now. Get my scale out of the way here. I have a baking sheet here that I have lined with a piece of parchment paper. So I'm going to need five strands and lots of room. So I'm going to turn these into five good long ropes. 
these should be longer than my pan about one and a half times the length of my pan is what I'm estimating that should be okay so there's one strand keep working here you have to work kind of fast because if you work too slow your first strand will start to rise and become too thick while you're working your other strands and you want to try to keep these ropes about equal thickness second one So there are my strands. All right. I'm going to do a one over two five part strand. If you can braid three strands, you can braid five. It's basically the same process. And then two on this side. And we're going to start off by pinching the five strands together and folding that underneath. Okay, whatever side the three is on, that's the side that's going to get the one over two. Okay, so this is my one, it's the outside one. This is gonna go over two. Now I've got three on this side. So my outside one goes one over two. Again, one over two. Make sure those are up tight. two, one over two. Hopefully already you can begin to appreciate the pattern that I'm going to end up with here. And you can pull these a little bit tighter to make them smaller toward the end. I want to arrange that on my paper because I'm running out of paper as well on this end. Okay. And then tuck your ends underneath. This has got a funny look to it, this end here, but that's okay. It's okay if it gets fat in the middle and it's thinner on the edges. That's fine. That'll look like a nice loaf of bread. So you saw how difficult that was. Again, if you can braid three, you can braid five. Really what I did was a three-part braid, but I, I crossed one over two rather than one over one as I was braiding. That'll give me a nice longer strand here on the outside for my bread. Okay, I'm gonna cover this with plastic. And again, that has to rise. I'm gonna let this rise for about 45 minutes this time and then I'll be ready to start doing my egg yolk wash on it. Notice any difference? This has been rising now for 45 minutes. I took my um, egg yolk yo wash out of the refrigerator a little while ago to let this come up to room temperature. It's looking good. Now, I want to just lightly brush this surface with wash using a pastry brush. <laughs> 
I can tell already this is just going to come out so nice. Oh, while I'm doing this, I'm heating my oven to 375 degrees. I'm estimating that this is going to have to bake 35 to 40 minutes. I'm going to actually check it with an instant read thermometer. I want this to come up to between 190 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. That's about 88 to 93, figure about 90 degrees centigrade. If you wanted to, you could add poppy seeds or sesame seeds to the surface of this. I'm not going to, I'm going to bake this as is. Okay, that's enough. If I keep going, I'm going to end up tearing that bread. Nope, a little bit more right there. That's not covered. Okay. So I'm heating my oven up to, again, 375 degrees. When it reaches temperature, I will place this inside and again, bake this anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, as I like to say, I hope there's room in your diapers. There it is, fresh from the oven. Just to give you an idea how big that is, I mean, look at that compared to my hand. That is a huge, loaf of bread. I'm going to see if I can slide this off onto my cooling rack. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. That is a huge loaf of bread. So this has to cool for a while. I mean, this is the hardest part about baking bread is you want to just cut right into it, slather a slice with butter and chow down. You got to let it cool down because there are starches in there that have to gelatinize yet that happens during the cooling process. As far as how long this was in the oven, it was in the oven for 35 minutes and it came up to just over 190 degrees. Okay, it's time to slice into this beauty and see how good it tastes. I'm going to slide this over a little bit. It's the dog across the street. You can hear that barking. Oh, this is so tender. There it is, beautiful inside, a beautiful crumb, a little bit of yellow because that's the yolk. I could strangle that dog. Actually, I like dogs. Okay, I want to spread that with some butter and see how good it tastes. I'm spreading some butter on a slice of my bread here. This is one of the end pieces, but this looks so good. Mm. Nice and tender. You can't beat homemade bread. Oh, okay. So there is a fancy braided loaf. Okay, I'm gonna go sit down and relax and just chew on my slice of bread. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.